Good morning and welcome to our Wonder Buddhist Temple family service today, family Dharma service. My name is Linda and I'll be your MC. We will begin with the ringing of the temple bell or kansho that signifies the beginning of a temple service. It's a deep and sacred ritual steeped in ancient tradition. It's the calling of the people to come together to listen to the Dharma or teachings. The temple bell represents the gratitude and deep appreciation of the members, friends, and guests of Windward Buddhist Temple. Please sit quietly in your seat. Please rise for the meditation, followed by the chanting of the Vandana and Tisarana by their congregation in Pali and English in the Red Jodo Shinshu service book can be found on page seven.
Namo Namo Please be seated. <clears throat> Today's sutra is verses reaffirming the vows in the Red Jodo Shinshu service book. <clears throat> from the head. 
does vow is shared equally by all together attaining awaken mind we are born in the land Namo Amida Vats Namo Amida Vats Namanda 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 Please rise for the Shinshu pledge number 2 in this red Jodo Shinshu service book on page 6 And trusting in the, in the vow, vow of, the Buddha, of the Buddha and reciting the sacred name, I shall proceed through the journey of life with strength and joy. Revering the light of the Buddha and reflecting upon my imperfect self, I shall strive to live a life of gratitude. Following the teachings of the Buddha and discerning the right path, I shall spread the true Dharma. Rejoicing in the compassion of the Buddha, respecting and aiding others, I shall do my best to work towards the welfare of society. Please continue to stand for the Gatha, the wondrous gift of peace, in the Brown Praises of the Buddha book, page 176. Today, our Dharma talk, we are very pleased to welcome our own, very own Shirley Yanagisa. Thank you, Shirley. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is nice to see all of you again, because most of us see each other only at our Sunday services. If you'll notice, I'm wearing this shirt that I bought at the University of Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, Maui no Hawaii, Maui is the best. <laughs> I'm just explaining it to you, okay? <laughs> In the book, Discovering Buddhism in Everyday Life, Reverend Marvin Harada, who was a resident minister of the Orange County Buddhist Church, 
wrote about many experiences he had. Reverend, of course, Reverend Harada is now the bishop of the Buddhist churches of America. Shinju Terayama wrote, human tears are the smallest ocean created by man. In 2001, Reverend Harada wrote an article titled, Tears That Cleanse Our Eyes. In a lecture by his teacher at Ryukoku University, Professor Takama, Takamaro Shigaraki said, he heard a touching personal story. He was once riding a cab in Kyoto and was talking to the driver who seemed like a typical working class fellow. To Professor Shigaraki's surprise, he learned a wonderful lesson. Professor Shigaraki commented on how the rain cleans the air of the pollution and smog and makes it so nice the next day. The cab driver answered, you know, we humans are the same way. The professor asked, how is that? The cab driver answered, unless we shed tears occasionally to cleanse our eyes, we cannot see life very clearly. Mm -hmm. Professor Shigaraki shared this story in one of his lectures. The tears we shed in life from our joys and sorrows are the cleansing rain that enables us to see and live life fresh and clear. This example by Reverend Shigaraki illustrates a Buddhist teaching or concept relevant to our lives. We usually have no problems when we have tears of joy. I have tears of joy when I see my relatives and friends whom I have not seen for several years. Aren't you happy when you see your friends that you haven't seen for a long time? Tears of joy are touching and memorable and give us a different view of life. Tears of sorrow are more difficult to accept and beat. I'm sorry, to bear. If you watch the news on your television or read the news in the Star Advertiser, you will see or read stories about Maui and the fires in Kula and especially in Lahaina every day in the newspaper. On September 24th, there was a service at the Honolulu Betsu Wing for the Maui people who were affected by the fire, losing homes and family. After our family service, we went into the other room to watch the service. Some of us were watching and listening to the service, and others were talking and doing other things. If it meant a lot to you, you may have shed tears of sorrow. For me, I did sh share tears of sorrow. I have a relative who was safe but lost the house. It was the home of my sister-in-law and my brother who passed away in 2021. My son sent me photos of Lahaina after the fire in the newspaper, and he circled the burnt house, if you'll notice there, yard and swimming pool. As I listened to Reverend Hironaka in his talk, he was the minister of Lahaina Honganji, who was a speaker at the Betsuing service. He had long pauses. I could feel the pain caused by the loss of his Lahaina Honganji and the home his family was living and all the personal items of his family members. Reverend Harada wrote that the tears of sorrow, of sadness, of failure, are the tears that cleanse our eyes, that open our eyes to life and to truth 
that we have perhaps not seen before. When our eyes are cleansed by the tears of sorrow, we can see our family, our friends, our work, even life itself in a different manner or different light from a different perspective. How precious and dear to us, to those things, because when our eyes have been cleansed by the tears of sorrow and sadness. Bishop Harada wrote that whatever you face in life, do not fear the tears that we must sometimes shed in sorrow, in pain, in failure. Those tears are the tears that cleanse our eyes, our hearts, and minds. May your tears enable you to see true gratitude, true humility, <clears throat> true life, and the truth of Namo Amidabutsu, he says. In April 2002, Reverend Harada wrote about a man who would wave to cars as they passed on his street. He started waving to the man who wore bright red, I'm sorry, bright orange gloves so people could see him waving. The man made an impression on Reverend Harada as a living example of non-material giving. In the six paramitas, the first practice is dana, or giving. The second practice is a non, I'm sorry, <clears throat> The second practice is a non-material giving, as this gentleman did, as he would wave and smile to all the passive wise. I would like to read a true story about material dana, and it's called The Old Man and a Bucket of Shrimp. It happened every Friday evening almost without fail, when the sun resembled a giant orange and started to dip into the blue sea. Old Ed came strolling along the beach for his favorite pier. Clutched in his bony hand was a bucket of shrimp. Ed walks out to the end of the pier where it seems he almost has the world to himself. The glow of the sun is a golden bronze now. Everybody's gone, except for a few joggers on the beach. Standing out at the end of the pier, Ed is alone with his thoughts and his bucket of shrimp. Before long, however, he is no longer alone. Up in the sky, a thousand white dots come screeching and squawking, winging their way toward the lanky frame standing there on the end of the pier. Before long, Dozens of seagulls have involved him, flattering their wings wildly. <clears throat> Ed stands there to toss shrimp to the hungry birds. As he does, if you listen closely, you can hear him say with a smile, thank you, thank you. In a few short minutes, the bucket is empty. But Ed doesn't leave. He stands there, lost in thought, as though transported to another time and place. When he finally turns around and begins to walk back toward the beach, a few of the birds hop along the pier with him until he gets to the stairs, and then they too fly away. And old Ed quietly makes his way down to the end of the beach and on to home. If you were sitting there on the pier with your fishing line in the water, Ed might seem like a funny old duck, as my dad used to say, you know. Or to onlookers, he's just another old cougar lost in his own weird world, feeding the seagulls with a bucket full of shrimp. To the onlooker, Rituals can look either very strange or very empty. They can seem altogether unimportant, maybe even a lot of nonsense. Old folks do often strange things, at least in the eyes of boomers and busters. 
most of them would probably write all it off down there in Florida. That's too bad. They'd do well to know him better. His full name, Edward Rickenbacker. He was a famous hero in World War I, and then he was in World War II. On one of his flying missions across the Pacific, he and his seven-member crew went down. Miraculously, all of the men survived, crawled out of their plane, and climbed into a life raft. Captain Rickenbacker and his crew floated for days on the rough waters of the Pacific. They fought the sun. They fought the sharks. Most of all, they fought hunger and thirst. By the eighth day, the eighth day their rations ran out. No food, no water. They were hundreds of miles from land, and no one knew where they were or even if they were alive. Every day across America, millions wondered and prayed that Eddie Rickenbacker might somehow be found alive. The man adrift needed a miracle. That afternoon, they had a simple devotional service and prayed for a miracle. They tried to nap. Eddie leaned back and pulled his military cap over his nose. Time dragged on. All he could hear was a slap of the waves across against the raft. Suddenly, Eddie felt something, something land on the top of his cap. It was a seagull. Old Ed later would describe how he sat perfectly still, planning his next move. With a flash of his hand and a squawk from the gull, he managed to grab it and wring its neck. He tore the feathers off, and he and his starving crew made a meal of it, a very slight meal for eight men. Then they used the intestines for bait. With it, they caught fish, which gave them food and more bait, and the cycle continued. With that simple survival technique, they were able to endure the rigors of the sea until they were found and rescued after 24 days at sea. Eddie Rickenbacker lived many years beyond that ordeal, but he never forgot the sacrifice of that first life-saving seagull. And he never stopped saying thank you. That's why almost every Friday night, he would walk to the end of the pier with a bucket full of shrimp and a heart full of gratitude. It says, P.S. Eddie Rickenbacker was the founder of Eastern Airlines. Before World War I, he was a race driver, race car driver. In World War I, he was a pilot and became America's first ace. In World War II, he was an instructor and military advisor, and he flew missions with the combat pilots. Eddie Rickenbacker is a true American hero. And now you know another story about the trials and sacrifices that brave men have endured for your freedom. He says, as you can see, I chose to pass it on. It is a great story that many don't know. You've got to be careful with old guys. You just never, you just never know what they have done during their lifetime. I read this story some time ago, but I don't remember where. However, I received this story. This is, it was sent to me, to my email. And it was a, such a long time ago, I don't even remember you know, exactly when it was. But I think, isn't it a wonderful story that teaches us about the Dharma and compassion and interdependence? I would like to end my talk by reading what is in the Shinshu service book on page 24. Listen. Listen, listen to the voice of the Buddha. Listen to the birds singing in the morning, the wind sighing in the boughs overhead, and the roar of the waves on the beach. 
Listen to the rain on the roof and the snow falling in the fields. The Dharma speaks to us through the sounds of the world, forcefully and eloquently and beautifully. It speaks of the unending change around us, the minimal, the mutable truth of interdependence and the peace in nature. Do we have the ears to hear and listen? Listen to the Nembutsu in the Hondo. Listen to the noble silence of the Buddha. And this is from the heart of the Buddha Dharma by Reverend Kenryu T. Tsuji. Thank you very much for listening. And before I go, I would just like to say that some of you may have seen the miniature <laughs> in the bag, it's on the table, it's a miniature of the Chinese gardens. And I'm just going to add this, I know my husband doesn't want to say that. The pieces are so small that tweezer had to be used to put the flowers in place. So take a look at it after, you'll see what I'm talking about. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Shirley, for that message. Please rise for the Gatha. Listen to his voice in the Brown Praises of the Buddha book on page 92. And then continue to stand for the Nembutsu on page 135.
when I ponder on the compassionate vow of Amida, established through five kalpas of profound thought, it was for myself, Shinan, alone. When we entrust ourselves to Amida's primal vow, we who are like broken tiles and bits of pebbles are transmuted into gold. Namo Amida Namo Amida Please be seated. Thank you for listening to the service. And we will now have announcements by Mrs. Prudence Pisson. Good morning. I'm covering for Dennis. Uh, let's see. We have, I don't, I think Mel's here before, but in case some of you haven't met Mel, Mel's sitting right there. She's visiting us. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Uh, thanks for your talk, Shirley. That was, I love stories. It was a very good story. And Linda for being MC, Neil for being our greeter today, and uh, Lisa for playing piano, and we haven't sang those songs in so long. It was nice. Uh, let's see. Ryan is for being our videographer and setting things up for us. Cookie, of course, you're hitting the concho. It's always nice to hear. And to Merle and her team C for our refreshments this after our session. Uh, I have five announcements to make. Uh, the fall food drive begins today through November 12th. The boxes are located right outside the office, so um, your donations will be welcome. October 21st, Saturday, is Pride Parade. And those of you who are interested, I've made copies for the event, and I'll leave it in the back table. Um, I think there's lots of groups from the I know the Honolulu District temples that are going to participate. Of course, that means you have to walk from uh, Magic, Magic Island all the way to Kapilani Park. And they're not providing us transportation. So I'm thinking about going, and if I do, I'm only going to walk halfway, as I told you last week. So uh, I'll leave the information in the back. And the following Sunday, October 22nd, is Remembrance Service. Now, it is a time when we uh, remember those who passed away any time of the, any year but this month. But this month, we're catching up because in August, we didn't have services. So those people that passed away in August will be remembered. And in September, we had to cancel the service because our water was shut off. So we're doing three months of remembrance next week. So if you have any family member, friends, pets that you want to remember that day, you can bring photos of them, put it up on the altar, and there'll be a signing sheet. So you just need to sign in, and it will be recognized during the service. Also, after that service, uh, in this side, I'm going to set up an assembly line, as I mentioned before, we are going to be doing our second uh, social concerns project. It's for the Mai movement, and we are going to make those Mai kits for them. So I'll bring all the supplies. All I need is a few hands to package them. Uh, and the fifth thing is there will be a visit to the Jikuen Temple on November 19th. There will be no service here at the temple. Uh, so, and unfortunately, we don't have a bus now, so <laughs> it's going to have to be carpooling. So Dennis has created a signing sheet. I'll leave it on the back table. Those of you that plan to attend and, vis and visit them, uh, please sign up. Let's see. Yeah, we have to, they, the tentative plan is to gather here at 8 and leave here by 8.15. I think their service starts at 9. And their parking lot is a little bit bigger than ours. There's not much parking, so we need to carpool. Let's see. 
Any other announcements? Yes. That's Bob. I'd like to share these two balls in string. If anybody wants, I'll put it in the back of the table so that anybody wants, you can just take. take. Thank you. They're good to tie things up. Okay, if there's no other announcements, then we'll do words of thanksgiving before we move to the other side. And also, um, while people are having their break, we're gonna set up on this side and zoom in to the Dharma School activity that's going on today. So those of you interested, you can come back here. Okay, let's do words of thanksgiving. It's on page 126 in your red book. We are truly grateful for this wonderful food of gift of life. We share its benefits with all beings. As we partake of this food, let us remember Amida Buddha's compassion, which surrounds all people and all forms of life. Namu Amida Buddha. Itadakimasu. Thank you. <laughs>